Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here, back with Lens Island. And in this video, I just want to show you all the weapons in the game and all the tools in the game, in case you're curious. It took a while to get all these, but uh, I'll give you a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to tell you how I got each each one. Um, and then maybe we'll go into town and I'll show you which vendors sell certain ones. And then I'll talk about like how, the time it took and at the very end I'll show you uh, my favorites. So let's head over to the workbench here. Take a look. Okay, so first I'll show you the sets you can see here. So the iron ones you can make uh, on the level one workbench. Pretty straightforward. Once you make all eight of them, you can make a, the set bonus. I'll go over each weapon in a bit though. Um, then the tier two bench, you can make all these ones. Here's the set bonus here, weapon. At tier three workbench, you can make all these ones, and this is the, the uh, bonus one you get, the set bonus. You don't act, get it, you actually have to craft it after you get it. And then the pirate weapons, you buy these in town, uh, in the pirate town. Fishermen, you buy in the pirate area as well. I'll just show you the set bonuses really briefly. I'll be going over each weapon in detail though. Uh, here's the fisherman bonus one and the materials. Uh, the nature one you buy in town, and here's the bonus one, the banana on a stick. Refined, uh, you buy from the blacksmith, and then here's the final set bonus. The forge, you actually have to get in the dungeon. There's three different areas in the dungeon. I won't actually go into detail on those, but you'll find them in the, in the dungeon, and here's the set bonus shield. Pretty amazing shield. It does active blocking, but I'll get into that later. Uh, the torches, you just craft on the bench, tier one bench, tier two, tier, tier three. The nice thing about this lantern one is that you can have it on your backpack and it gives you a light source as you run around. So it doesn't use up a hand slot. Watering cans, used early game to water your crop plot, crop plots. Uh, tier one bench, tier two bench, tier three bench. This one has two uses, this one has four uses, and this one has one use, but it completely fills a water tower. I'll probably do a farming guide at some point, talk about that. An exotic, you buy these in the pirate area as well. These are super expensive. I think the last two or three are about 2,500 gold each. Uh, which gets to uh, one point. You're going to need a source of income to buy all these things uh, from the vendors. So I've created giant uh, farms. I made three giant farms about this size. There's another one over here. I generally farm wheat because it's just simplest, I, I find. There was a bug with watermelons where you couldn't knock them down with a scythe. But this isn't a farming guide, so we'll get uh, get into the weapons here a little bit. So I'll go through the swords first, then the hatchets and pole arms, and then finally the shields. So let's just go one at a time here. I'm not going to try to pronounce them. I'll just I'll just briefly click on each one, and you can see the uh, see the stats. Now, this thing's the thing in the right here is the damage type. So certain monsters are susceptible or have resistance to stab, slash, or bludgeon. You have to experiment around to get that. Um, then they have a damage rating. Initially, he did, the developer didn't show these numbers, but now they do, so that's great. Okay, critical hit damage. That's from when you do like a special move, which you probably already know. But if you click while the thing is lit up, you do uh, critical, dip, critical hit damage. So we'll go through them here. Um, these are kind of out of order in terms of the ones I just showed you in the sets, but uh, you'll be able to figure out which one is which here. Uh, the Brutal Blade. I'm not going to talk about each one, I'll just go eat through each one and you can see the stats. Thorn, uh, this has got from the Druid Vendor. This is a pirate weapon. Speed high. The Marlin, um, I think this is from the Fisherman. Iron Swords, Tier 1 Bench. The Golden Gladius, this is my favorite sword. This is what I use uh, most of the time. It's got high speed, pretty good damage, pretty good crit. Uh, as you can see, that's what I'm equipping right now. That's pretty much what I've stuck with. Got the Short Blade, uh, Speed Insane. <laughs> but you can only click so fast, so I didn't find it was uh, extra special. You might like it though. The Bowie Knife is what you start off with. The Sabre, uh, this one is from the Pirate. It's pretty good. Pretty decent. The refined sword. This is from the blacksmith. Uh, also quite quite nice. The 
claymore it's a slow speed but it has a high knockback but i've noticed knockback in this game isn't super big anyway so it's not a uh, not that great now into the axes maces and pole arms so here's the boarding axe the woodman's wood wrecker this is actually one of my favorite uh choppers for chopping down wood I'll quickly show you it here. We'll go chop down a tree. This tree in my area here. It does 10 damage as a regular hit. But if you get a bonus hit, which I'll try to get here. I'm failing. There we go. It does 20 on that critical hit. It also has a, like a special move here if we do uh, W. W is one hit for 13, but if you do uh, E and you're lined up correctly, you'll get a double hit, 13 each, or you can get that on a crit, if you time it right. You get two hits worth 24 each, so it's really fast for chopping down trees. It looks slow, but it's uh, it's pretty effective. Let's go back into inventory here. So that's, the, that's one of my favorite wood choppers. Uh, we get into some of the mazes and axes here. I'll just kind of go through them quickly. You can pause the video if you want to see the stats. This battle axe is pretty good. Uh, iron hammer. I did use the iron battle axe for a little while. I don't like anything but swords because you can't use shields with them. And shields are pretty critical, so... The forged hammer, this is one of the ones found in the dungeon. The one interesting thing about this is it doesn't have a damage range. It's a f like a flat 15 damage or a flat 30 crit. So there's no guesswork, no rolls based. Let's keep going here though. Got the the golden for Seti. This oh my crops just came in. Um pretty good damage all around, but I think this one's a two-hander. Got the golden hammer. Uh battle only axe. The boulder smash. This one has a really cool visual, the Fiery War Axe. Pretty good damage all around, but the speed is low. And pretty good uh, damage types here, all 80% for each type. Uh, the Spinner, pretty good axe. You can see how well it chops wood with this thing here, percentage if I chop. Banana on a stick, completely useless. <laughs> it says the knockback is insane. I tested it out. It's not really that great. Uh, what else do we got here? The Captain's Club. Pretty decent mace. Except the stab damage is terrible and the bludgeon is terrible, so. Refined mace. These purple ones are uh, at the blacksmith. It'll take uh, the this one resource. Let's go let's sleep to the night here. Because it's kinda hard to see things when it's dark out. Okay. Uh, those purple weapons from the blacksmith, the later ones, require uh, Dark Essence, which you can only get from the void things in the dungeon. An easy way to farm these is to find a spawner of the medium-sized void monsters. And just kill them as they spawn out, and you'll get kind of infinite infinite void essence. Let's keep going here, though. I think I was on this one. Uh, we got the Refined Battle Axe. Pretty good damage all around. Pretty good damage types as well. Corsair Glaive, Iron Spear, Iron Spear is an really early one. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite swords. Actually, no, sorry, this isn't the one. This one's actually low damage. Ice Lance, looks pretty cool. Pretty good damage. The Gone Fishing, uh, Fishing Lance, I guess. Dark Spear. Uh, painful Pike. And then, and then we're into the shields. And like I said, I always run with a shield. Uh, active blocking is when you're holding down T and you're actually blocking. So 85% is pretty damn good. Passive 40 blocking is really good. And the movement speed, you don't want this to be too low or it's going to be slow to walk around. This is a good all-around shield. I did run with this one for a while. I used the reinforced one early on because it had uh, good passive blocking and good move speed. Uh, the circle of life. I didn't use this one at all. It has this weird description. Upon the owner's demise, the shield will drop a single seed that will spread another shield in its place. 
There might be something special with this where you die with the shield. I haven't experimented with it yet. Iron shield, really early one. Uh, forge shield is really good active blocking and really, really good passive blocking, but you'll find that running around with movement speed 0.6 is really slow. So if you don't have to move in combat much, this is great. Uh, if you do have to move, it's pretty terrible. The Golden Ward has active blocking of 100%. This is one of the best shields in the game because when you're holding that shield up, you take no damage at all. Passive blocking isn't so great at 20% though. The Rex Shield, uh, this one's pretty good overall. Uh, movement speed's not the greatest, but the passive blocking 45 is quite good. Refined Shield, also pretty good. Good movement speed, good uh, passive blocking. And my favorite running around shield, the Exotic Feather Shield. It's a terrible blocker. This is not used for combat, but it's got a speed modifier 1.2. And as you can see, I'm using it right now. You can kind of see a running speed comparison here. Let's uh, let's put, actually I better not put that on. Uh, let's see here. So this is the run speed normally. Let me find a long place to run so you guys can see this. So I'm running along and when I equip the shield, you can see I get faster, slower, faster. <laughs> so it's a good thing to run around with. Okay, so that's all the shields. Let's go over some of the tools here as well. So the tools. Uh, there's quite a few tools actually. Um, go through the axes first. I'll just go through them so you can see the stats. The forged axe is pretty good. Crit resource bonus isn't great, but uh, overall damage is good. Bait and chop. Iron hatchet. Steel axe is pretty early weapon. And then we're into pickaxes here. So it's up to personal preference whether you want high damage, which will make the tree to go down faster, or whether you want a good crit bonus, which will give you like one or two, usually one wood each time you hit. Sorry, not wood for the pickaxe, rock. Uh, each time you hit something. Iron pickaxe, rock piercer. This one has a pretty good crit bonus. Miner's pick, forged pickaxe. As you can see, that's the one I'm running around. This is one of my favorites. Good damage, pretty good crit bonus. Uh, refine pick. Then we're into the torches. I'll go over the torches. This is just the basic torch from the level one workbench. I never, I did actually make end up making the second one, but it's just gives a little bit more light. But the one I always run around with is the backpack lamp. And then the three different watering cans. I mentioned those already. Two uses, uh, four uses and then one use but it fills up your whole watering tank. Then we've got the scythes. Scythes are really good for uh, harvesting your crops. There's uh, there's one from the nature guy as well, the druid. It's uh, similar. It does a little bit more damage but you're not using this for combat. And I think that's probably it for tools. Uh, I'll show you the size in action here since this is ready to go. Uh, let's use our. Oh, this will be. I'll do a separate fi farming guide, but don't want this video to be too long. But hitting the R key was really good, and then W does like a smaller chop. But R is really good for collecting all the goods. Now I set up these three giant farms because, like I said, you're gonna need a lot of money. You're gonna need a lot of cash to buy all the stuff. And we'll quickly go to town here and I'll show you where you buy each type of weapon that's purchasable. Now I've bought them all so they won't show up anymore, but uh, I'll show you where you get them. Start with the druid up here. So normally the weapons show up here. Now the thing that confused me at first, uh, they only sell one, two, or three weapons. Um, so you have to buy them. And then if you want to buy others in the set, you have to wait a certain number of days. And they'll tell you, you can click on the vendor. And he'll say, 
he'll have a dialogue that says, when's your next restock? And it'll say like one day, two day, three day, 10 hours. And to get some of the more exotic ones, I had to wait like 15, because you're waiting in between cycles, like you, how can I explain this? You buy a couple, you wait five days, you buy a couple more, you wait five days, and then you buy the last set. Uh, just as a completely off-topic thing here, this grass that grows in the city is kind of a nice way to get uh, fiber. It's a nice long string of fiber. Anyway, moving on. Towards the center of town here. We're going to go to the blacksmith first. Oh, I didn't mention the bags yet. Um, can I show my active bag? Well, there's a few backpack upgrades. Um, I forget exactly what the stats are, but I think the first one allows you to hold 500, I'm going to guess here, and then 1,000, and then 3,000, something like that. And then the final one is 50,000. I kind of forget what the old backpacks do, because it's been a while. But you buy them right here. And the last one is pretty expensive. They upped the price of the Void backpack pretty recently. So at the blacksmith, it's right here where you'd buy the weapons. And then he restocks them after a certain number of days. I think at the, in the future there might be some weapons for sale over here, but there aren't any just yet. Uh, there's some here. I want to they change the price. Okay, it used to be two gold for ten stone, so they upped the price in the balancing update just recently. Uh, there is another lady off to the right there that looks like she'll sell stuff in the future, but doesn't just yet. Then we'll, oh, <laughs> I've actually never done that. Uh, we will uh, go around. This is what I get for recording a video. Okay, so the fisherman weapons are sold right here. He'll also buy and sell glass here. And then the exotic weapons are sold here. Like I said, the last two or three that you buy cost 20, 2,500 gold. Pretty expensive. And I forgot to mention, there's one weapon that you get on a deserted island. If you jump in the water and swim in any direction, you'll kind of hit the boundary of the map and you'll be taken to a little tiny uh, forgotten island. And on that island, you'll find, I think it's the, the Marlin. And then finally down here by the pirate that you can gamble with, you can buy the pirate weapons. So I think that covered it all. You guys able to see all the stats and all things. A bit spoilery, so, uh, but I was curious early on in the game, like what some of the set ones would be like. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Let me check my thing here. Did I miss anything? No, I think so. I don't th I'll probably have a farming guy that's coming out later to help you uh, set up a farm and make lots of money. But if you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you like these sorts of videos, uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.